You know, there are a lot of top ten lists out there that have to do with video game women. And a good chunk of them have Laura Croft, or chun Lee or Samus on them. But what about the overlooked video game women? You know those ones that aren't really talked about that often, if at all? That'd make a pretty interesting list, right? But I do have one rule. If I talk about a video game that has multiple overlooked women on it, I choose one to represent them. And with that being said, I'm Kyle Universe, and this is Filmtricity's Top 20 Overlooked Video Game Women, numbers 20 through 11. Number 20! Rumble Roses is one of those games that was more popular in Japan than it was in America. And it's a wrestling game that supports an all-female cast. But if I had to choose one to represent the game, it would have to be Dixie Clemens. When she arrives on the scene, all attention is focused on her. Not because of her choice of very revealing clothing, but because she always makes a grand display, as a lot of professional wrestlers do. This ranch girl from Texas is a formidable opponent in the ring and uses her trademark move, the Dixie Buster. I wouldn't want to be on the other end of that. Or would I? <laughs> yeah, I guess I would. Number 19. Just like in Rumble Roses, Arcana Hearts was more popular in Japan than it was in America. And one of the coolest characters was the half human, half demon Batgirl, Lilica Felchenro. Sorry if I butchered that name. But hey, you know you're a cool character if you fight while on rollerblades. That takes some skill. She spends her time on top of an extremely large antenna and sometimes challenges people to fight her when they refuse to go skating. Hey, do you want to go skating? No, I think I'm just going to stay here and read my book. We're going to fight! Number 18! If you're in a game with Captain Falcon, chances are you're going to be overlooked. Being one of the only female racers among a whole fleet of guys can't be an easy task, but Jodie Summer and her racer the White Cat proves she has what it takes to keep up with and even surpass them. Later in her career, Jodie was shown as a trophy in Super Smash Bros. Melee, and then again in Brawl. What a major honor that is, to be right up there with Dr. Stewart, Pico, and Samurai Goro. Way to go, Jody. We salute you, and your decision to wear your underwear on the outside of your clothes. It's an awesome fashion choice, and I think more women should try it. Number 17. Ah, Mario Golf. What a fun game this is. But how could anyone from Mario be overlooked? Well, besides a trophy in Melee and a sticker in Brawl, do you ever see Plum ever again? No. No, you don't. What's interesting is that originally Plum was going to be related to Princess Peach. Do you see where they're going with that? Peach? Plum? Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if your entire family was named after fruit? Ah, oh, Grandma Apple! Grandpa Watermelon! Oh, crazy Uncle Pineapple! Bring it on in here! But if you're looking for a well-balanced character in Mario Golf, choose Plum as your starting character. <laughs> Number 16. Back in the NES days before Ninja Gaiden was overrun with bouncing breasts, I mean, good lord, have you seen the size of... Well, anyway. There was one female protagonist acting alongside Ryu Hayabusa. I mean, I'm not complaining or anything, but... <clears throat> Moving along. Irene Liu. And the first time we see her, she actually shoots Ryu. First impressions, right? But it was only to tranquilize him. As it turns out, she's a member of the CIA, and she helps Ryu out by giving him a dragon statue. But of course, she gets captured and has to be saved. But after Ryu does the hero thing, they both share a nice moment on top of a mountain. You go, Ryu. Number 15. This schoolgirl, Yoko Asoyo, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, is given a special weapon called the Valis Sword. With this powerful sword in hand, she became the hero of Dreamland. Not Kirby's Dreamland, mind you, even though that would make an awesome crossover. And as the hero, she faces the usual problems, such as fighting through hordes of demons, preventing the Dark World from going into nether space, being watched while sleeping leading up to running through the streets in her pajamas to get her sword back, but once she retrieves her sword, like He-Man, she has the power, and now these giant bugs and items floating in the air don't stand a chance. Neither does this guy. Honestly, I don't know why she isn't around today. She was flying high 20 years ago with three games on the Sega Genesis, but then she just disappeared into video game history. But her games will always live on in the hearts of the fans. Number 14. 
Katara Grimface from Lost Kingdoms 2 hasn't had an easy life. And no, in fact, she does not have a grim face, it's actually quite pleasant. But that's about to go south really quick. Abandoned by her family at an early age, she grew up on the streets, with her only possession being her runestone. Her runestone gives her the ability to summon creatures from the monsters in her deck. Red dragons, blue dragons, bone dragons, white elephants, white tigers, white krakens, a blue foot, classy vampires, Dr. Zoidberg, sword guys, pumpkin people, behemoths, and lots of others, including my favorite, the Valkyrie, which destroys all. And that's why if you encounter Tara Grimface, you're not going to be walking away in one piece. Number 13. You're looking for information and you decide to go into a nightclub called Outer Heaven, where inside you find our next entry, Isabella Velvet. Wow. Just by showing this image, I've upped my video rating to PG-13. Heck, I lost my G rating in the first couple minutes just by showing Dixie Clemens. I put Isabella on this list because she is both overlooked and well-known. Her picture has been circulating around the internet for years. Most know the image, but not the character. In the game Snatcher, she provides you with information you need. What a way to get information in a video game, huh? After a while of asking her the right questions and giving you a better lead on your case, she returns to her dancing. Isn't it funny how most gamers such as myself are more interested in seeing who they can spot in the crowd instead of Isabella dancing half-naked on stage? Hey, it's Sparkster. Number 12. One of the coolest overlooked characters from the late 80s would have to be Razor from Maniac Mansion. She's the leader of her own band called Razor and the Scumettes, and she stands out more than all the other characters. Well, except for Sid, because Sid's cool. Razor has the ability to play the piano with telepathy. Yes, I know it's only because of graphical limitations. Had this been made today, I'm sure they would have had a fully animated scene of her playing the piano. And she's got more balls than all the guys put together. Uh, well, except for Sid, of course. She will actually steal Weird Ed's hamster and put it in the microwave until it explodes. Oh, man, that's epic. Number 11. This is Burning Force, and no, I'm not going to make a bunch of adult-related jokes about it. So you ride your giant pocket rocket across a number of areas, shooting up the bad guys. You play as the blue-haired woman Hiromi Tingenji. So basically it's a simple kind of game. You fight some enemies and then you fight a boss, move on to the next level, that kind of thing. After a while of being out of the gaming world, Hiromi made a comeback in the Namco Capcom crossover game where she was partnered with Toby Masoyo from the arcade classic Baraduke. Something tells me we haven't seen the last of her and her mighty rocket. Ten overlooked video game women have now been recognized, but ten still remain in the shadows. Stay tuned to Filmtricity Productions on YouTube for the conclusion of this list.